so I'm Melanie Smith, a partner of Melendrez, and uh, I'm going to be giving you a, a galloping retrospective of uh, Melendrez and, and LID at least uh, the last 15 years or so. And I can't, I've been with the firm 10 years, um, partner in the organization, and, and uh, can't speak much before that, but, but I'll give you the, the start. Um, so I'm starting in 2001 with a Kaiser Hospital in Ontario. Um, and not the place necessarily that you'd think would be the uh, bastion or a leader in, in lead consciousness. And you can see that this is not a California native palette, but there certainly are natives in here. Um, this was a project that um, really was ahead of its time and drained really all, all of the parking for this large hospital facility to a perimeter bioswale. And the interesting thing is that that technique became a standard for the city of Ontario that they imposed on, on other projects. So I think in, in a way it was ahead of its time. I had a chance to go to this hospital, unfortunately, a couple of weeks ago, and the landscape is thriving. Get it? Thriving? Um, in 04, uh, uh, and it's being maintained, that's the point. Um, in 04, a satellite Santa Monica College um, uh, campus at near the airport could have been really out of sight, out of mind, and instead was really focused around the landscape and creating places for people, but also places to drain all the water um, to capture all the water on site and cleanse it in bioswales um, at the perimeter of the site. So certainly not um, an easy out for, for this project and um, still functioning today and, and drawing uh, new students all the time. Um, s shifting gears to Santa Monica College's main campus, uh, there was a, a desire to have a really a new social hub for the campus and uh, social heart really. And this is a hard working heart. You can see a lot of turf there. This is a gathering spot that's used for many different kinds of functions for the campus. But underneath that turf uh, is, the, is a collection space and a detention basin for all of the water in the core of the campus. And I'm sticking in a bit of a ringer here. But I thought it would be interesting to throw in a phytoremedi phytoremediation project. So this is the, the Not a Cornfield project, Lauren Bonds project um, that was done in downtown several years ago. Um, looking at really transforming a, a space using planting a season of corn um, in, in a downtown. We started with a post-industrial landscape. We ended up with this, uh, a field of, of native wildflowers and soil that was much, uh, much cleaner than when we started and through, through the use of planting um, uh, and just a season of, of reuse and a space everyone could enjoy. But we don't have to recapture always the huge spaces. Um, this is a very small space in Long Beach, uh, an unused uh, or previously underutilized traffic island uh, that is a, has become a welcoming oasis for bus, uh, waiting uh, bus riders. And uh, it, it was uh, dubbed Rosa Parks Park. And underneath the surface, it's, it's grabbing all the water from the tributary streets and treating it and infiltrating it. And um, really, this was just an opportunity to take a passive space and make it a multifunction, multi-purpose space. And as you can see, gravel is fun to play in, too. So that was a nice outcome. Um, also in Long Beach, and again, another project I debated showing you, but this is a project at Century Villages of Cabrillo, which is a housing development um, next to one of the most high-impact development areas in our region, the port of Long Beach. Um, and a previously underutilized space is now taken over for a berm of planted trees, um, which are, were selected for their highest environmental values and ability to uh, filter stormwater, to capture pollutants, filter pollutants, um, and really transform a space from a dead zone to a thriving living place that, that the residents of the development can use next to the TI freeway. Shifting gears to a much bigger scale, again, um, this watershed, actually, um, the Bayona Wetlands Project. Um, if the Annenberg Foundation's project, which is located sort of in the upper right of this large area, 30 acres of the 600, um, comes to fruition at some point after what will, I'm sure, be a very lengthy process, it'll be an opportunity to do a net zero urban ecology center that really gets to tell the story of an urban watershed in the project. So through the landscape, um, and, and through the use of uh, planting and the responsible use and collection of water, tell the story of the, of the natural transect. So coming back to the LA River watershed, something we're all thinking about a lot more than we were. You can see the river in red running through the site, and you can see the tributaries coming into the river, and we've just been talking about that, that we're concerned about 
obviously what's flowing into our river, but what's flowing into our river comes off the street grid. So it's the, not so much the, what were sort of alarming looking red tributaries there, there were sort of the quasi-natural ones, but the man-made, the streets that are dumping into the river are what we've really got to think about. So Marsh Park is the spot, the green spot there on the lower right, and MRCA just opened this park um, recently, and so now water that was formerly running into the river um, without being captured, without being cleansed, without being treated, um, and having any opportunity to infiltrate is now going into a system of river arroyos, um, arroyos and river marshes actually surround in this park space. It's all California native river appropriate planting. Spaces have been created for people to exercise, to walk, to relax and enjoy, to picnic, to gather, um, but all woven around this uh, system of spaces that we can deal with, not just the site water, but s water coming from adjacent streets. And just a detail of the, the bioswale in which, we, as we've talked about before, we can slow down. We have the opportunity to infiltrate, although soil, there's a pretty high uh, slow perk rate here in, in this area. So it's a little harder to infiltrate, but we can cleanse um, before we send in. So all the water on the, on the site, whether it's from the um, picnic pavilion that's on the site, or whether it's coming from being captured out of the parking spaces is worked into the landscape and into this um, larger system that is also a great teaching tool about um, the natural systems that are adjacent to the river. But what I think is most important is that we've ended up with a welcoming face on the river from both the um, bike path um, and the neighborhood. So it's a native, friendly, um, clean um, uh, face on the river uh, that, that can welcome folks into a space and an amenity that previously wasn't available to them on the river. That's my very brief retrospective. Favorite low impact project? I develop, well, I have to say, I mean, I have to say Marsh Park. That's my favorite. I, you know, it was a, a, a great feeling of pride um, it being at the opening a couple weeks ago and uh, for many reasons. One, uh, I think the quality of, of what we achieved was is very high. I think it's going to be a great amenity space for both the neighborhood, as I said, and people passing by, a new way to engage with the river. Um, but I also think that it was done at a really hard time. So MRCA had been working on the project for a really long, you know, long time before we came on onto the scene and had secured all the funding and then the, the Great Recession hit and sort of had to start over again and put the whole package together again. So there was a stall in the middle you know, pulled it off. And um, so, you know, I think it's an example. And, and it really is, I mean, for me, I look at that aerial shot, not the most beautiful view of the park, and I realize that, but just you understand the magnitude of the challenge. Um, and just to have been a part of, you know, solving it at one level is really great for me.